We are online 24-7. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. And now... You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. For you, long time no speak. Thank God. Thank God. I'm still making a living here. <laughs> Not so much. You know, I could do a lot better, so if you could send over a few dollars, it would certainly help. How much do you need? Uh-huh. Whatever I could get, I can't get it. One thing about me, I'm not particular. I take what I can get. As long as nobody asks me to go awake or make a move, and they show me a chair, I take the money. <laughs> We're speaking with the one and only Jackie Mason. You can also catch him on Cameo, where he does special video appearances. So, Jackie, what are you up to these days? What's new in the life of Jackie Mason? Well, everything is new. You know, what's new, I read the paper and I repeat it. That's about all that's new, because at this stage in life, as soon as I get up, I'm already tired. If I start walking, I'm, I feel like I'm passing away. <laughs> so sitting still is my only feel. <laughs> so, but, but the truth is, I'm enjoying myself, because Let's be honest about it. Most of the people don't enjoy what they do for a living anyway. So you know everybody looks forward to to retire. They keep planning where they'll retire and how they'll retire. So it sounds like retirement is the only pleasure in life. But when you're old enough to work, you feel you have to work in order to make a living. Not by that time, by the time you become an old too. You saved up money all your life because you resented and detested everything you're doing for a living. <laughs> and every time you have to get up in the morning, it's no pleasure. Then you have to figure out where you're going to eat and how you're going to eat and you'll probably have time to eat because you have to get back to work. So working takes up all your time. You enjoy some of it, but nobody can enjoy all of it. Most people are struggling. They're struggling through the work to get home at night so they can do nothing. So now instead of being up one night, you're you're up for the rest of your life. So that's your biggest aim in life, is to work to do nothing. Here I am, I'm doing nothing now, so I should be enjoying life more than anybody. Well, you definitely should be enjoying life. Tell me, what do you think about our current president, Joe Biden? What are your thoughts about him? There is not one person in the world, even if they agree with every policy that he stands for, I don't think there's any one person in the world that can be able to claim that he knows what he's doing. Well, the best they can claim is that he's still alive. And they're not even sure that they know he's alive. Because he doesn't look like he doesn't act like he's alive. But you would picture, could you picture if he went to as an application and for a job in a major corporation or even any corporation or any store or to work anyway, even in a coffee shop. Even a coffee shop that doesn't sell coffee. <laughs> Any place that there's a door open, but they hire him for anything. They see a person when he says hello, he's already mixed up. When he talks, uh, more than a minute, the guy starts squinting like he's trying to remember what he does for a living or where he is or why they hire him or what for. <laughs> Now, if a person is that condition, you think they were competing for a job somewhere, you think they were hired. He, he, he could be a president of a country, but he couldn't give a job, even the manager of a toilet. <laughs> uh, I, so- I, don't wish, I don't wish him any harm. I wish him the best. But they gave him the best. And, <laughs> and the level of his activity, of his intelligence, of his ability... Exists every place but with him. Now you had as if, a, you don't, as I don't, as if I if I if I took a job as a as a coal miner, I'd be very good. But if I got, if I was a ski instructor, you think I would hire Jackie Mason? Well, I would <laughs> hire Jackie if Mason did, if they did if they did a bump to a restaurant. Would they hire me? So <laughs> what, what did you want to say? And I, I hear what you're saying. So, you, <laughs> I, what, what do you think about Donald Trump when he was in office? You had a relationship with Donald Trump, didn't you? Not only was he a good president, he was the most effective president probably since Abraham Lincoln. 
people are so ignorant that they don't know or realize how many things they accomplish. If they weren't busy with personality, it was here. The greatest criticism you could find about Donald Trump is they can't stand his hair. Well, having a president walks around with hair like this, that's the biggest criticism. Did you see his attitude? How do you criticize the narratives? They thought there are things more important in the world than a narrative. I don't like to hear you call people names. You always hear one substantive or meaningful reason why you don't like them. It's always worthless nonsense. There is of no consequence to anybody. But if you stop to get a list of everything he accomplished, it's unbelievable. And if any objective person looks at it, they can't get over it for a second how many things he accomplished to help this country. Where do you ever see such employment figures, such economic figures that moved up to, to all kinds of extreme, unbelievable categories while he was president? Now, the, now it sounds like this, this whole country is in total confusion. Before the country had a sense of direction, now it's all you hear is confusion and, and uh, to a level that's practically insane. Every time he opens his mouth, he wish he closed it. Because as soon as he opens his mouth, he doesn't remember what he wanted to talk about. <laughs> it's, like comparing a, it's like comparing a genius to, to a maniac or an idiot. I don't want to call names. I shouldn't say a maniac or an idiot, but it's close. So you don't like uh, president? <laughs> you don't like our current president? What do you think about uh, the current people who are running for mayor? Who do you want to be mayor? If you're not running, Jackie, me, who do you want to see to be mayor of New York City? What do you think about? This is, this is an interesting conversation. Usually, when you're on the radio, or on television, or anything, they like to show off about how much they know. You're just the opposite. You call me, I be, I call you up, and I find out from you how much I know. Did you did you ever hear of this cameo business? Which it's business? An unbelievable thing. It's called cameo. Cam, I think you're in cameo, right? Where people can get a hold of you. They can book you for different events, right? Through cameo. Yes, this is uh, the way the people are happy birthday. I have any personal or private uh, celebration of any significant factor in their lives. I do. They hope their mother gets well. They hope their father makes a fortune. They hope they could walk in the street without an accident. They hope they hope that somebody sends them a birthday present, whatever you they want to employ, whatever thing they want. To. So you get, they ask celebrities or personalities for them to make the celebration for them. You know, it's a great thing. Before I let you go, I was just curious. You know, you were born Yaakov Moshe. You're actually Harav Yaakov Moshe Mazza. You were ordained by Rav Moshe Feinstein of blessed memory. Do you have any recollections of Rav Moshe Feinstein or any things that he said oh, that made an impression on you? Oh, he made an impression on anybody. He was like an angel. This man was uh, had to, you know, are you Are you a religious man? I'm a religious man. You, absolutely. And I, I remember. I helped remember you. We got we first introduced to your brother by Bernie Mazin. We wrote a book on the Holocaust. That's how you and I first met. Where uh, I interviewed him and helped promote his book uh, because you asked me to help out. That's how I first met you. Is that right? Is this man Israel? Rabbi Bernie, Rabbi Bernard Mazin. He wrote a book on the Holocaust. Right, right. I like the way you ask me who I think I like the mayor. The truth of the matter is everybody is totally confused about who they like the mayor because so far nobody seems to stand out as, as an exceptional talent or a, an exceptional personality, a brain, an effective leader. And they think of somebody and you ask anybody, they, all of a sudden they stop, they stop wondering, they stop whatever they're doing and they look blank. They have the best way to make a guy look like he's lost in, lost in spaces. Yeah, as soon as he has to move, he think should be the mayor. All of a sudden, their mind stops working because they can't think of anybody because nobody so far is making any impression. When you think of somebody, people talk about this guy, this Chinese guy, Yang. But when they talk about him, they don't know if they like him or why they like him. All they know is that the only name they heard about because they can't think of anybody. 
Do you have an opinion about this? Have you talked about it? Well, there are a lot of choices. I mean, Yang is the front runner. Eric Adams uh, is a front runner too. You have Curtis Lee on the Republican side. So uh, we're at a crossroads. We need somebody good. I, I I throw Jackie Mason's name into the ring. I think you should be mayor. I should be mayor. I sh I should. I'm too big to be a mayor. I should be a president. That's an insult. <laughs> that I be no, mayor. that's on the on the way <laughs> on the way to be. The whole world. I should be running the whole world. I should be in charge of every place. <laughs> We can make a play, the world according to Jackie Mason, but the fact is, right. but it's on the way. You become mayor, you become president, so it's it's a stepping stone. The truth of the matter is, did you, did you mention Curtis Lieber? I did mention Curtis Lieber, yes. I think he would be, but I just that now that you mention it, I forgot to, to mention his name because I admire this guy for many years, and I think this guy would be an effective mayor. I think you're right by mentioning him. I forgot all about it, but I was, when you asked me the question, because you don't read about him too much, he's been mentioned here and there, but you know, I don't know why. Nobody seems to give him any space or time. Nobody seems to make an issue out of him right now. But I think he's by far the most effective type of a guy you could find for this job. He, because he's been brilliant with this organization. And I think he'd be brilliant as a mayor because the main issue right now in this city is obviously crime. There's nothing more important than crime as an issue in this city. Everybody who talks is afraid to even walk into the street at night. They feel safer. They feel safer in a burning building than they do walk in the street of New York. And after, after it gets dark, after 7, 8 o'clock, look through your window, you see nothing. You see crime. No, nothing is moving. I think people are more fearful now in New York to walk in the street than they ever were. If this was a war zone, if you were, if you were afraid that they're going to bomb your building in the middle of a war, you wouldn't be as scared as you are right now to walk in the street. No, it's a Shonda. It's a, we have to do something about it. We have to clean up New York. That's, I think, a top priority of the next mayor to That's make right. New York livable right. again. No, no question right. about they that. Should, right. They should make a rule that if you're still living, you're not allowed to walk in the streets. <laughs> what do you think about wearing? I, what do you think about wearing a mask these days? Well, it looks like it's, they're all confused about this too. The people who are more objective are the scientists that you listen to. The people who are really involved in science, they all say it's totally unnecessary. I keep hearing that more and more. Did you hear what came out yesterday and today? What Most came of these out? Guys, they, they're, all, they're all saying all these would be scientists. When you call them, these people are experts in this field. They don't call them scientists. They call them... Uh, what do they call these guys? Ex anyway, they, call, they, they call them experts, right? Right, experts. These experts are all saying the same thing. That outdoor walking, if you're in the street, you don't really need this mask. It doesn't serve a purpose, and it's not necessary. That's what I'm hearing on television all day the last couple of days. Do you like Dr. Anyway, Fa my friend, do you like anyway my friend, that my throat is not working anymore. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Don't take it personally. I'd love to talk to you all day. Because obviously you're a big hit. People enjoy you. People tell me about you. And obviously you're making more money than me. And I resent it. <laughs> but I'm, I wish we'll, we'll set up, we'll set up a Tzedakah. Hours. We'll set up a, a Tzedakah box for you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set it up. So but God I God bless you. Take care of yourself, my friend. Uh, and uh, wonderful. happy Shabbos to all the listeners. And to you too, don't think I'm not including you. You, to you too, a pleasure to speak with you. I had great times listening to you. Thank you, thank you, and great afternoon. Thank you, thank you, the one and only Jackie Mason, and you can catch him on Cameo. I'm Jackie Mason. And you're probably saying to yourself, how did he wind up here? He's got no place to go. I thought he was a star. I was a star until I got this job. You know what my job here is? My job here is to talk about Zeb Brenner. Are you saying to yourself, you got nothing better to talk about than this? The truth is, I do. But Zeb Brenner said to me, I'm on television. People are watching me. But everybody knows that people are so, excited about me. They know that I have a great show. They know everybody loves me. But nobody cares to advertise on it because they don't know that people are watching it.
Who's going to tell them? Somebody has to help out. The United Jewish Appeal is an important cause, but it's nothing compared to this, because the United Jewish Appeal makes a fortune. That's why they can't make a living. You know why? Nobody has the price. You know why they don't? Because they don't know people are watching. I'm watching the show, but I found out I'm the only one. Why am I the only one watching? Because nobody has the type. Why don't you have the type? Help this man out. He can't make a living. For free information about advertising on TalkLine's television programs, please call 212-769-1925. That's 212-769-1925. Thanks for listening. TalkLine Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the TalkLine network and TalkLine's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100, or email info at talklinenetwork.com. This concludes TalkLine's Jewish broadcasts on radio for tonight. For continuous Jewish programs, please go now to talklinenetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms or jewishpodcast.org.